Before we begin, um, I'm, I'm Carrie Cooling. I am the campaign co-chair along with James Klein for the 2020 campaign cabinet. And we're so excited to have you all join us tonight um, on this virtual platform. We're gonna start the evening with a brief United Way video to kick off the, the evening tonight. The beginning of February was a really exciting time. I started as the new president and CEO at United Way of East Central Iowa. We had such a great plan ahead of us. We had just gotten done with a wonderful donor event and we're looking to moving forward. And the next day I had to come back and we decided to start working from home. At Eastern Iowa Health Center in the third week of March, COVID struck 27% of our staff. And immediately thereafter, the United Way came to the rescue by donating diapers for our families that are in need. Many companies have stepped up during this COVID year. And reminder, United Way funds all nonprofits in the five county area. I support United Way. Join me. And just when we were learning to live with COVID, a derecho hits. A storm so intense and destructive, you had to experience it to believe it. But in classic Iowa form, Iowans got together, helped each other to get through it. But the end result is Cedar Rapids was badly damaged and our community and our fellow Cedar Rapidians need more help now than ever. So please do what you can to help during this United Way campaign. Thank you. People felt hopeless. They didn't know what to do or where to turn. United Way quickly sprung into action and became that connector and collaborator with other nonprofits in our community to determine what our needs really were. They quickly established the Disaster Recovery Fund and helped coordinate volunteer efforts so that people who wanted to give back knew where they could volunteer. When someone is in crisis, that feeling of being overwhelmed consumes them every day. United Way has always stepped up in times of disaster, and we are here every day to help vulnerable community members, because that's what United Way does every day. We do that in times of disaster. I have been a part of HIBU's award-winning United Way campaign for several years. And this year, as I lead our campaign, it's important now more than ever for you to donate and support United Way. I'm honored and proud to serve as the first Latina on the board of directors for United Way of East Central Iowa. And because of this, I am committed to making a collective and positive impact in our community because your voice matters. Well, we want to say thank you to showing up today and tonight and being able to support us. We also want to say thank you for those who participated in the video. We decided to put that together and just had a great turnout. People really came forward and just said, yes, include me. I want to be a part of it. And it came together really quickly, which was really neat. As I mentioned, I'm Kristen Roberts. I feel like I know most of you on the phone call. I started, like I mentioned, uh, in February and within six weeks of starting, we made the decision to start working from home and COVID really at the time seemed like the biggest challenge that I'd have to face in leading the organization. And then unfortunately, our country watched the death of George Floyd and our community became very passionate about racial equality. And those two challenges seemed as if they were going to be the biggest challenges for us to be able to overcome. And as you guys know, then the derecho came. So earlier this week, it was funny, I was asked not once but twice from two different people if I was enjoying my new job. And I thought, gosh, I don't know if enjoying is really the word I would be using. <laughs> not in a bad way, but it's just been such different challenges throughout 2020. And so what I think I've been enjoying is what I told them is I've been joining, enjoying learning new things every day. I'm enjoying meeting and working with new people. And I'm really enjoying seeing the impact that United Way can make and what we're doing. And I think that's the one message that has really come through in this past year is we are here during disasters and we really do step up. We've been here for over a hundred years and it's those disasters that really give us the opportunity for people to understand the importance and why we need to be here. And there's been two different thought processes or points I think that have come out of the Dre show that I just have been making when I talk with people. And the first is, Many of us have been feeling overwhelmed. We get bounced around from phone calls to emails, and we've just been frustrated 
the processes that we've had to go through when it comes to insurance, media com, cell phones, whatever it is, when we're, we are dealing with our response to the disaster personally. And the one thing that we've talked about is how that is a small window into the lives of people who live on scarcity every single day. They are being bounced around and they are having to work through these processes and systems. And it just gives us people with means a small glimpse into what they face. And the other thing that we've talked about is how the storm has really shown a really bright spotlight on the inequities and challenges that many in our community face. And it created an outcry. If you remember back to seeing those pictures of the apartment buildings, people living outside of in, in tents, and there was that outcry and anger. And the other message that we really talk about is those challenges were there before the storm. The storm just shone that spotlight on it. And if you were upset, remember how you felt three months, six months, nine months, 12 months from now, because those challenges are still gonna be in our community. The thing though that I'm excited about and proud that I'm enjoying is that those are the things and the solutions that we as United Way in our community get to play a part. We are the part when the conveners and the collaborators and we are helping come up with those solutions that our community needs. So one of the people who helps us with those solutions is Alejandro Pino at YPN. He's the executive director. He's been there about two years now, I think. Close, yep. Yeah. Close, and he's going to be talking really quickly here with us and sharing his story as to why United Way plays an important role in the work that they do and in our community. I appreciate that, Kristen, and it's nice to be here. And I think I've met some of you, not everybody, but I look forward to Gary. Just to let you know, I went to school with Liz. We graduated the same year at Regis. So it uh, goes back a little bit. But uh, anyway, I'm very honored to be here and, and certainly honored to, to be uh, serving YPN in the capacity that I'm at right now. I'm really surrounded by extraordinary people that really, as Kristen mentioned, show up you know, every day to do the work that we do. And that's the most important thing. But uh, YPN, just very briefly, is about support, education, and empowerment. So we're really trying to kind of build up families in that capacity every single day, and that's really important for us. But um, the other day at a staff meeting, I started the, uh, the meeting with a quote, um, and it read, all great changes are preceded by chaos. And, you know, the chaos that we felt uh, caused, you know, because of the uncertainty of the COVID uh, situation and also because of the destruction of the derecho uh, has really kind of brought to light just the true, just how remarkable the nonprofit work is that we do, that we do on a daily basis. So really two key words kind of show, kind of come to mind when I think about the nonprofit community and more importantly, the United Way partner agencies that have shown up um, during this time. The first word is compassion, and the second word is action. So really, as, as many of us were affected by, you know, have been affected by COVID, we never stopped serving. So, you know, we continue to do that. So as an example, at YPN, even though we, we aren't able to do programming in person, we're still doing it virtually. And I know many of us at our, at our specific businesses have, have had to adapt uh, in that respect as well, too. But we're continuing to do that. That support is critical. As Kristen said, we're going to be seeing long-term effects from this and also from the disaster as well, too. Uh, so that, that communication is critical. So we'll continue to do that. The other very important component and something that we're very proud of, too, is how the Diaper Bank has responded to this service as well, too. And this is, you know, we're very fortunate to be partners with the Eastern Iowa Health Center that started the diaper bank back in 2016. Just to give you an example, last fiscal year, we gave out about 146,000 diapers to the community. Because of the COVID situation and the derecho, we've opened that up to the entire community because we knew there was a need out there. Since the derecho, we have given out around 235,000 diapers just in that small uh, amount of time. Since January of this year, we've given out over half a million uh, diapers. So again, that impact that we talk about is there because none of that would be able to happen without the generosity and the compassion that many of you here on this call and what the United Way does for partner organizations, uh, specifically that. 
I typically say, and I have to be careful, I usually use the word explosion when talking about diapers. Not a good combination to talk about. <laughs> Uh, so I just typically say that it's grown very, very rapidly. Uh, so we continue to do that. So we talk also about the derecho and the response of that too. So obviously many of us had that emotional response, you know, when it happened. We went out, we looked at what happened, we asked ourselves, what the heck just happened? So we all were affected, but we also knew the families that we served, much like Kristen mentioned, we serve a lot of the immigrant and refugee population in Cedar Rapids as well. We knew they had been, been disproportionately affected. Action. So that is when we went there and we saw what Kristen, and it still gets me a little bit shaky because I still remember that day when I, you know, when I went out there and I saw folks uh, living in apartments that had been destroyed, uh, living in cars and in tents as well too. And it's very difficult to see that because in many ways you see yourself in them. You know, you see your kids and their kids. They're part of us. They're part of our community. They're part of Cedar Rapids in Eastern Iowa. Uh, so that's when the action really started. Word got out. And as Kristen mentioned, the outpouring of support was really something extraordinary. And it continues to this day. So as an example, James, I saw James um, out at CRBT. They had another event for that particular population as well, too. So the need continues to be there, and it will continue to long term. Many of these folks have, have been re-traumatized because many came from refugee camps. So having, having to do that again um, and go through that with being resettled uh, to different temporary housing has again spurred that mental health um, challenge as well too. So again, we will continue to be here for families again uh, long term we saw truly the greatness of this community come together. And I say this not lightly because it's something that is really extraordinary. And I know we often say, we see this with disasters and responses, but it truly has, has proven how great of a community we live in and that the compassion is really coming from all directions. And we can't forget that, that compassion is uh, essentially what gets that action uh, going as well too. So I think we sometimes overlook the incredible power within ourselves to really make that impact. To change the life of somebody for the better is something that is it's an ex extraordinary power within each one of us to do. So every dollar given will impact somebody. It will help empower our participants and strengthen our community. So again, all great changes are preceded by chaos. We have an opportunity now to really take advantage of this and really make those changes. So thank you for, for listening for your time. And uh, I believe I will now turn it over to James and Carrie. Yes, thank you Alejandro. And thank you to YPN for all the services that you provide in our community. Um, you definitely are making an impact for young parents in our, in our community. So. Um, before um, we get too far into it, I would be remiss if I didn't personally thank each and every one of you. Um, you know, tonight we've got a lot of leadership givers here, and leadership giving represents over 45% of our giving to our campaign. So it's incredibly important. Your role is incredibly important in the, in the community. So thank you very much for your generous support of United Way. Um, as I was kind of thinking uh, about tonight, um, you know, you think about 2020, and I think Kristen and Alejandra, you both talked a lot about it. 2020, what a year, what things could possibly uh, be thrown our way. So many um, emotions, so many needs, COVID, derecho. And I kind of was reflecting a little bit that I joined this community in 2004, and I've always been just so amazed by how resilient our community is and how we come together to to help one another and support one another. And I think um, now more than ever, we're, we're seeing it. And, and we, we, I think the United Way campaign um, or the United Way staff probably looks at James and I sometimes and they're like, are you guys crazy? Because we've gone this way and this way, you know, we, we're talking about COVID and then all of a sudden we have a derecho and we're like, how do we, what do we do? And um, at first we were timid about going out with, with um, COVID because we wanted to be careful about where everybody's situation was. 
And what we've found through this and, and what I heard even today, which was so, so great to hear, we had a United Way call with an update on the campaign cabinet. And we have people, there's a few cam uh, campaigns that have just started and there's people who haven't given to United Way for three or four years that are giving now because they see that there's, they feel like there's such a need in the community they've seen such devastation and they know it's their time to give give back. And so I think we're so fortunate to be in such a, a wonderful community that that people are recognizing that need. And and I think it's an opportunity for for you guys all and what what James and I want you to hear loud and clear is that hopefully your leadership in our community to your family and your friends and your colleagues, you can um, share this message that our community this year more than ever is gonna need each and every one of us to step up. So your, your voice, your messaging, whoever you can share that with, however we can help support you with that, um, it's, it's our community really does, does need it this year. James. Yeah, great, great points, Carrie. And Thank you to all of you for joining the call. Um, really appreciate it. Been a tough year, but there's been some wonderful things this year also. So I, I think I'll go to, you know, as we kicked off our United Way campaign at CRBT two weeks ago, um, I said, there are homeless people living under the bridge two blocks from where our bank is every night in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's not New York, that's not LA, that's not Florida. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, there are people that live under Interstate 380 every night. There are people that wake up every single day and have to look at the bus routes to figure out how they're gonna get to work. While they're looking for the, the route to work, they're thinking, where am I gonna take my children? And so you might pause for a minute. And how many of you thought about where you were gonna sleep last night? How many of you thought about how you were going to get to work today? How many of you thought about where your kids were going to go and be safe during the day? So many of you probably had a stressful day today and you didn't deal with any of those items. So add that on top of it. Imagine, I mean, this is Cedar Rapids, Iowa. This isn't ABC News or anything else. We, we have need here and COVID and DeRachel has accented, accented it like no other. Alejandro mentioned at CRBT today, we had a huge refugee drive. There are people that were fighting to get coats for their children because they don't have coats for their children this year. And there were kids or people that were fighting to get $100 off of their rent payment this year because they didn't know, or this month, because they don't know if they can make the payments. So, you know, sometimes you have to step back and, and today, and you know, I saw Alejandro and I just stopped and just paused for a moment. We are so blessed. And so many of the folks that came through this drive today or the people that are living underneath the bridge or the folks that have to ride the bus or the people that don't have daycare, they're great people. Something just happened in their life. And every single person on this call can have something happen in their life and the only place to call is 211 United Way and your donations and, and the stories you tell to your colleagues, your company, your businesses that you're connected with, they make a difference in how people give to United Way and just the ability to stop and pause and realize this is much bigger than me and there are people in need in our community. So Tonight we're saying now more than ever because of COVID, because of derecho, because of what's going on, United Way needs you. And so we, we thank you, A, for stepping up. B, we thank you for telling the story. And C, we thank you for encouraging others to join the fight. Because uh, there's so many great people in this community who through no fault of their own are having challenges every day that we might not even understand. So thank you for your leadership. United Way, the thing I love most about United Way is I can give to United Way and know that they are plugged in. They know which nonprofits need it, which areas of our community need it. And it's a, 
you know, from a banker standpoint, it's a super efficient way to give money and know it's going to the right place. So thank you for your leadership and uh, join us this year. So with that, I'd kick it back over to you, Kristen, to wrap us up. Well, gosh, you guys all did such a great job. I don't know what else to say. Just again, thank you. And you all have influences and you have those spheres in which you walk in and you have that influence. And so that's one of the things that this year, kind of the now more than ever, if you have the ability to influence and put United Way into a conversation, it's something that will be well received. We've seen it, as Carrie mentioned, people giving who haven't given for a couple of years. We've seen United Way be in the press more than it has been in the last few years. And we all know the collaborative and collective nature in which we work. And we know that it's those solutions that are going to help our community move forward. So just thank you so much. I don't know if we want to open it up for questions. If anybody has any questions, we have a couple minutes where we could take some. Put everybody on the spot. <laughs> I feel like the Jeopardy music should be playing. <laughs> if not, it tells me I have that ability, but you didn't cue me up fast. <laughs> <laughs> next time, Andy, next time. If not, that's fine. Thank you. We appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, Zoom is the new way of life for us. So one more Zoom meeting is not overlooked. We appreciate the fact that you are willing to do that and do one that's voluntary. Carrie, James, anything else you want to Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Um, we really appreciate um, you sharing the message in our community and we look forward to having a successful campaign in 2020. And I would wrap it up. Back when I was a young man and had hair, uh, it, it, was a, a leader, <laughs> it was a leader in the community that told me about United Way. It was David Lodge. Um, so be that person that takes somebody aside and explain what, explains what United Way is and the impact it is. Uh, that can make a huge difference that it has for me. So thank you for joining. Appreciate all you're doing with United Way, with the community in general. I'm a lifelong Cedar Rapidian, and I've never been more proud of the, of the community I live in than right now. So thank you for everything and have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you all for your thank leadership. You. Bye. Thanks all.